Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, January 23rd, 2012. Our top story is an update from the world of medicine. A research group headed by the University of Central Florida have, for the first time, converted umbilical cord stem cells into other cell types. They focused on a particular cell type, but this breakthrough has huge implications for all stem cell research as it avoids many ethical issues around embryonic stem cells. The cells they produced are called oligodendrocytes, cells that insulate nerves in the body. In order to convert the stem cells, it was found that norepinephrine and other growth factors made these cells partially mature. Now, the ability to produce these cells has a number of applications. They could inject new cells to improve the condition of people with multiple sclerosis, as it's caused by a loss of this nerve insulation. Similarly, cells could be injected to encourage regeneration from spinal cord injury and even just further study of the growth of this cell type. And from the world of evolution, a study by the University of Illinois may have discovered the molecule that led to the rise of life, specifically life based on oxygen. About 2.4 billion years ago, there was a massive rise in atmospheric oxygen content, generally attributed to the appearance of organisms that produced their food through photosynthesis. But the researchers were wondering why oxygen production would evolve when oxygen is generally toxic to organisms that don't need it. So they analyzed protein folds from almost a thousand organisms across every domain of life to find the first biologic process that needed oxygen. What was found is the production of the molecule pyridoxial, also known as vitamin B6. However, this just pushed the question back further. Where did the oxygen needed to produce the vitamin come from? So, going back to their massive analysis of proteins, they identified an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. So, ancient organisms just trying to deal with environmental hydrogen peroxide may have inadvertently triggered how life is on this planet. Finally, we turn to the world of molecular biology. Scientists from the National Institute of Health have developed a new method for observing the inner structures of viruses. Conventionally, a technique called cryo-electron microscopy is used to study the outer shell of viruses, but is usually useless in studying inner structures. While study of viruses' outer protein coating has given us important knowledge, for example, how exactly vaccines work, scientists still need to be able to look inside viruses. So they found a way to use the damage caused by radiation to their advantage. First, an image was taken with low-dose cryo-EM to reveal the outer structure. Then, the amount of radiation was increased, partially revealing the inner structure, showing a column of bubbles as the proteins were damaged by the radiation. Finally, both images are used to create an intact image of the entire viral structure, with some help from 3D reconstruction software. Now, this could also help with the imagining of human proteins in their native environment. Of particular interest is the comparison between normal and cancer cells. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.